Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Socio Psycho, and this is Mob Reviews. And today, we are going to take a look at Tiny Keep. This is created by Fia Games, and it is available for PC, Mac, and Linux. It is a roguelite dungeon escaping experience, and the question of how well does it manage to pull that off is what we will be diving into today. Now we will be beginning in the options menu. The options and graphical fidelity of the game are actually quite simplistic. It's not a huge berth, but it does have what you need in resolutional different sizes, which is appreciative. The quality of the game is very simplistic to what you can see on the screen in the background image. The game has its own simplistic art style, which is not bad by any resemblance, but it is something of a more preferred taste. It's not a darker, more realistic tone feel or a simplistic roguelite feel. It lands in the middle. Now, the game has been running at 60 frames per second with no tearing, clipping, or crashing, and not had any performance issues regarding that. Now, there have been one or two small issues in the game, which as you can see on the side taskbar, we will get to in time. When we back up and we go to the actual new game element, it's a little interesting that they have a little character creational opportunity. You don't get much between a choose of female and male and a little difference in the outfit and the exact way you look. It's pretty basic and I'm not even sure really why it's in there or what benefit it holds as a developmental time personally would rather have been spent to fix some of the more obvious flaws in the game than rather add this. It doesn't take away anything from the game, but I just don't feel it adds anything either. Now there is on the bottom a dungeon level meter in between 1 and 20 as there's 20 levels in the game for you to escape from. As you progress and complete these different levels, you will have the availability when you pick a new game to pick up from one of these levels. Now keep in mind that you will not have the gear that you've acquired thus far and the money to acquire the buffs and bonuses that you get in a roguelite style game. So while you are starting fresh, the opportunity to pick up exactly where you are may be beneficial to you, which is why I like it, but at the other time you might just end up at more of a disadvantage. When we jump into the game itself, the most basic thing we're going to talk about is the level and layout of the dungeons, the levels that you have to fight through, the design pattern, and the difficulty that lies within. The themes of individual levels pretty much stay the same. You have the different exits of each floor, which is similar, and the different themes. Maybe one will be an orcish, or one will be undead, what is different, where the generalization of randomization comes from, is the build, the map layout itself. The different rooms, the traps, the trap layouts, and where these elements all tie together. There is a bit of a similarity in a feeling because the different floors go in a sort of order, so it's not like a mystical tower where each floor can be randomly different upon a huge variation of mysticism. But you pretty much know that each floor is going to have a single theme, but the layout of that is going to be different. The real beauty of the generalization in the way they've designed this, though, is the fact that there are traps in the different floors and levels. Now, these traps are not a deterrent for the player just to be more careful or inconvenient for the player because maybe you're trying to run away from something, you get stepped on it, and you die. No, the beauty of the traps is the fact that you can use them to your own advantage, but you can allow the enemy to trip these traps, some of which are repeating to a point, and upon the enemy tripping these traps, they will take the damage from that trap. If you will continuously move opponents over the same trap, the trap will eventually burst. So it's not a abusive mechanic. It's not something you can really just sit back and lure them into a fortuitous position which I appreciate. They actually have the traps being broken upon a certain amount of damage being done to the enemies, or yourself even. The difficulty I found within regards to how the game progresses, and this can be looked at as a good thing or a negative thing, but I felt that the themes of the game, while they stayed the same mostly, didn't really keep in balance with the level of difficulty of the enemy. 
Some of the enemies that you find, such as a level 3 dungeon boss, can be really difficult and really abusive to the player, even if you have some delightful passive bonuses. Now you may be thinking that that is exactly what you're hoping for, because you want a roguelike to be difficult. You want a roguelike to challenge you, and you want it to sort of make you work for it. And so from that side of the spectrum, I can definitely see and appreciate the amount of careful mechanics and quick time reaction that the player needs to have in order to ensure that they don't take as much damage as they can or to be as clever as possible to defeat these opponents. Whether that is keeping prisoners, fellow prisoners that you find in the dungeon in their cages until maybe a boss is coming. So you release the prisoners and they swarm a boss. It doesn't maybe kill the boss, but it gives you time to do your next move. Run away perhaps, or take advantage of a chaos and strike the enemy from behind. So there is definitely a level of luck, yes, but cleverness that can be tied to the increase of difficulty. Where this becomes a bad thing though, is that because the game gets so difficult so early on, it really chops off a entry level point for people who don't enjoy an out of the gate difficult experience. People who like a slow build up and a give and take combative feel as if they're progressing through. Not a, I went out and now I'm on level two, level three, and there's a stone wall I have to climb. So that comes down more to a personal decision upon the player rather than necessarily a flaw in the game design itself. Personally, me, I found it a little frustrating because of a continuation of difficulty, you never really felt like you had a breather. And while you do gain coins from the enemies that you kill, and then you use these coins in certain shrines upon which you gain a passive bonus. From what I've noticed, certain bosses or enemies don't drop the items. They just drop the coins, and then you use those coins at a shrine, which gives you a random bonus to one of your stats, just like in any other roguelite you would see with the continuational climb of different passive abilities. The main issue I have from this game, and from what I can understand in looking about, I am not alone in this, is the camera angle. Now the camera angle is a very confounding, it's not exactly third person and it's not exactly top down, but it flutters in between both of them. Now you tie this in with the occasional overabundance of screen shake, and the screen shakes not necessarily when you are in combat, which is good, but as you're running through the dungeon, bats will fly out, and certain elements to make the dungeon feel alive, a screen shake will happen. The screen shake does not bother me, but when you tie the screen shake into the continuous floating of the camera, and the changing of the camera angle, which you have no control over, it can make people feel seasick or nauseous or even dizzy or annoyed depending on the individual. Not to mention that it also makes finding your way around the dungeon that much harder and disorientating you upon getting through it. One room starts looking like the other and they all bleed together due to the poor observational technique you have, i.e. the camera. When it comes to this game and the gameplay itself, it is very simplistic. It is a hack and slash, go into the castle and just demolish whatever you can. It's a very basic, primal kill experience, which can be good if that's what you're looking for. In a sort of not wanting to worry about tactics, not wanting to worry about certain power-ups and levels and putting this sort of gear set or this sort of item or this weapon even against this enemy and having just the most basic combat structure of hack slash and block and using traps to your advantage can be rewarding because of its simplicity. But when you throw in a camera that you have no real control over and it rotates like a boat in waves at time, it makes your ability to take advantage of your surroundings non-plausible. So at the end of the day, the question of whether this simplistic game is actually worth something and getting really falls down to the individual because if you like out of the gate difficult 
rogue lights where it comes heavily to the luck not only in a randomization of what items you get but enemies you get and where the traps are then perhaps so the more clever you are and faster in your critical thinking skills perhaps this will be just what you're looking for Unfortunately, the base that that applies to then even gets smaller due to the small issues with the controlling or graphic options of the game, as the art style may not be for everybody, but the way the camera angle definitely moves is a deterrent for sure. So when it comes to this game, personally, can I recommend it? And I'm really drawn on the line here. Because what it sets out to do in its unique style and creative manipulation of the layers, I really like. The combat's basic, you know the combat's basic, and that's fine. But I feel that the game pushes you in a little too fast in a difficulty climb, which is only made worse by the annoyance of the camera. If the camera issues were fixed, then I'd say absolutely pick this game up if you're looking for a hard challenge. But because it has the camera issues, my best bet for you would to be getting it on sale. Three to five dollars. I feel if you really enjoy this type of genre and you understand the camera issues or the camera issues get fixed in the future, then go for it. But losing three to five dollars is not a huge deal if you already pass by the Steam refundable option versus the full price. I enjoyed my time in the game, in the element, in the even theme of the world. The story as it progressed, I enjoyed all that. It was just the few minute issues that just did not call out to me. So I can recommend this, but reluctantly. You have to really understand that. Get it on sale rather than full price purchase. So ladies and gentlemen, I've been Social Psycho on this with Mob Reviews, and I hope this has been helpful to you, and I'll see you next time.